It's New Birth Thursday! Woo! And we're going to Germany, Germany. That doesn't sound like a German song. We like the, uh... <laughs> no, it doesn't at all. Uh, uh, yeah, so what's that German metal band? Oh, Rammstein. Rammstein. Yeah. 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 That scary. I love them. And by the way, if no, you... No, I'm not saying they're bad. They're just like, it's. you hear that and you go... They're intimidating. I'm reminiscing the, of I'm sorry, the very, the very, very best internet video no, really? I've ever seen is the YouTube Lego concert of Rammstein's Der Fr uh, uh, Firefly. Oh, yeah. And with they have, Darth, like, Vader, they have... Darth Vader's in the back. <laughs> Did they have Lego men with masks shooting Yeah, fire? and it's just, it's so, uh, you must, you must, after this show's I, over, look that up and watch it. I remember seeing them on the first uh, Family Values tour. Oh, yeah. The corn sponsored tour. Oh, yeah. And I was mind blown. That's all I can say. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah I'm there, were, there were appendages on the stage. <laughs> I should not be on stage. Yeah. Keyboard do, do, players do, do, doing, doing things, things, things that keyboard players should not normally be doing. Yeah. But so anyway, uh, <laughs> in keeping with our, our recent um, Belgium episode, we wanted to do something in a different country, so we went to Germany. And uh, Celebrator is a great, A, it's a great winter beer, B, it's the quintessential example of this particular style, the Doppelbach style. 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 Or the Doppelbach. Yeah. It's the Scheizas. Um, I'm gonna just scream random German <laughs> words throughout this episode. I know German. Nine. Run um, hands <laughs> <yeah>, so, uh, <laughs> uh, Einger, however, is uh, about a hundred and some odd years old or more. Some odd. Some hundred, odd. hundred and some. I think it was like eighteen. What is it? Eighteen seventy nine. I don't know. Does it say here label. anywhere? Uh, there's a zip code. <laughs> there's a zip code. Do they have zip codes in Germany? That's well, I'm weird. sure, I'm sure they have to. They have counties. Yeah. Anyway, so. I think it's like 1879. I could be wrong. Robinsons. It's imported by um, Merchant Duvin Corp from uh, Washington. Merchant Duvin. All right. So, so anyway, um, the Anger Anger Brewery is really awesome. I think that they they are probably the European equivalent to New Belgium. Um, extremely uh, technologically forward minded. Um, very sustainable. Um, most of their wheat and barley comes from surrounding farms. Um, and it's grown, yeah, it's grown using their spent grains, nice. fertilized by their spent grains. So I mean, they do a lot to like. So they're very sustainable. Yeah, right? they're very. That's why I said they're like the European version of New, uh, New Belgium. I think there's a fairly large, or fairly large. They're a huge brewery. They're they're a huge brewery. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just going. We're loose. <laughs> yeah, um, I think they do 150,000 hectoliters yearly. So is that a lot? I don't know. I can never keep up with the Germans and their what liters the, compared the, to gallons. That's, it's hectoliters too. So heck, yeah, yeah. I don't know what that I don't means. Know what a so hectoliter is. I don't know either. That's a heck of a liter. It's a heck of a liter. <laughs> nice win. It's a heck of a liter. So I'm gonna pop these, and they come with a cute little Billy Goat. I was gonna you say, can take home and name George little and little hug it and love it. Yep. It should be. It should be noted that uh, the word Bach actually means goat because uh, Bach beers are on the stronger end of German lager styles. So they're gonna hit you like a goat. Like, if you've never gotten hit in the chest by a goat, it's... So you've, you've never gotten hit by a... Oh, we've gotta stop and ask this question. <laughs> have you been hit in the chest by a goat? No. No, I never have. <laughs> you were leading but... on that path. Yeah, I was. You were gonna I, was, I, was, I, was yeah. I was representing that, but uh, it's never actually <laughs> happened. Because uh, I know I, know, I, I'm I, I I don't think I've ever seen a goat in person. <laughs> <laughs> really? I've never you're met never, a goat been, in real life. Been, oh, I know that I know the goat, like the Adam Sandler goat, like, hey, uh, guy, uh, you want to go to the uh, the uh, wow, the, the that's show? Right now. <laughs> Me and the goat ass, yeah. Um, no, the I, I I've been to petting zoos, so I've seen them there. You've petted a goat. I've petted a goat. Yes. There's actually a hilarious video um, of me when I was like nine years old going to the petting zoo in uh, Oak Glen and I'm hanging out like you know taking a picture like by the, uh, the by like a fence and the goat starts eating my shirt. The goat's like hey guy uh, yeah. like, your shirt looks yeah, pretty like, good. Oh this shirt looks delicious. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's a, it's a random me. night when I'm the same one on the show. <laughs> So. No, who doesn't know the goat? Like, I have no idea what the when, hell you guys when, are talking about. When you're oh. trying to guide, like you're trying to guide the show into a proper. So cheers area. to goats, apparently. Yeah, yeah, to goats. No, and, the Adam um, Sandler goat. Oh, you haven't heard? Oh God, the goat where they go the the the, uh, the Rastafarian show. You know, uh, you know they get in the mosh pit, and I just uh, <laughs> something to your beer. I'm sorry about that guy. 
<laughs> you do a very good impression Thank of Sandy. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I am so. tied to a uh, tied in a rope to the truck. Apparently John's you know. already had a six pack of the Doppelbock and he's been no. hit by the goat. <laughs> We're talking about the goat. I love the goat. Like, mm. check it out. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's funny. Um, this is a supremely malt forward beer. Um, so you're not gonna get hardly any bitterness off of this. Well, it's um, to be expected. Yeah, you get you like know. a nice, almost coffee-ish aftertaste to it. Um, I and I it'll... believe Ianger uses strictly Hallertau hops in their brewing process. Do they? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's pretty common. It's like, like Germany and Hallertau are completely inseparable. Right. You know what I mean? Huh. Um, but yeah, I, I'm getting like like a leathery kind of like earthiness. Yeah, there's all, well, I'm also getting that mixed with, uh, what is that? It's, uh, it's it's like a creaminess that if you could smell creamy, uh, I, that's I just, what it, I, yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? Like if that makes any sense at all. I describe it as like a softness. Yeah. Like creaminess yeah. to me is okay. a softness. But know? I mean, it's I, it's that I'm getting it on the aroma. Like it, it smells creamy. It's not a vanilla, but if right. you smelled vanilla without the vanilla, like that soft vanilla-esque. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know that makes sense in my head. <laughs> but as malt forward is a is, soft thing. You know, yeah. I mean, that's what I equate this. Yeah, there's, there's malt like, forward as this beer is, it's not overly sweet. It finishes very dry and very nice. Um, I, it, it doesn't leave that like stickiness in your mouth when you drink it. It smells sticky though. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's dry per se, but drier. It's, it's, it's clean. Yeah, drier. Yeah, clean. Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, However, but yeah, this is a massive. I'm Matt. I have to use the right word in all my sentences. <laughs> It's almost got like a bit of uh, it something. It does finish sure. dry, but it's like a fattiness to it, a little. Yeah, bit. It's, it's it's like an umami. No, perhaps no. It's very or unctuous. an unctuousness. Yeah. I guess um, unctuousness, but yeah, that's yeah, more yeah, slimy. Yeah, I'm looking for slimy. Well, I'm it, it, for... It's, it's very full bodied. Like it's it's very rich. Clearly, we is... have no idea what this beer tastes like. <laughs> What? No, we're, we're, we're working it out. No, we're working well, it out. well, no, it's it's interesting because it's it's very rich, it's very full, but it's six point seven percent alcohol. I mean, wow. you know, a beer yeah. of this of this magnitude. It's hard to find pale ales in the states right now that are six point seven percent. But it's got it, it's got a lot of depth to it, and it's very full bodied, and it's. Um, this is like the definitive like malt bomb of German beers, you know. Yeah, yeah pairs definitely. really well with like German sausages. I was really good. I was gonna go buy some because I was really in the mood to eat some German sausages with this. I could totally see that happening with this beer too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially yeah. with that kind of uh, Maillard. Yeah, kind of, well, and that's I mean, the thing. You can that, use this beer to, that's, to that's create a, the Maillard effect on the sausages when you cook them. Well, I mean, I think the beer amazing. itself has that word. So. Yeah, no, that, that's a good way of describing it. Like those, like cooking reactions. When you when you cook anything, you get Maillard reactions. It's um, what happens when a uh, a amino acid binds with a uh, sugar, I believe. Um, but it's like when you brown a steak, you know, that brownness, that's a Maillard reaction. It's a cooking reaction. And so you have that like interesting kind of... It's kind of like a, a mellow caramelization. Yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. It's... it's and this has... is very... Re it's very reminiscent of that subtle caramel roastiness, mm -hmm. you know. And I think the, the fattiness, like I said, which, you know, lends more to the mouthfeel... It, it works very well. I mean, it's it all kind of intertwines perfectly. Yeah. You know? so. This is like a spectacular beer. Like Yeah, and they, they've, the Germans have pretty much mastered this particular style, these styles of beer. The, the Bach, the Doppelbach, the Helles. I mean, lagers in general are kind of like a German thing. Like, they know how to brew lagers. Th thousand years of brewing tradition yeah. do that. So, I mean, and, uh, you know, Germany, the, Germany's tradition and history of brewing is so full and rich, and like it's where a lot of this started from. And um, I think this recipe is taken from some monk. You know, it, it like, always starts with yeah. Some it's monk. always a monk. If you learn anything, yeah. if you learn anything we like your beer. <laughs> yeah, anything so, from expert drinking. It's oh, there's a girl. Right. Like, hey, guy, uh, we like your beer. How about you come brew it here at the uh, the, uh, the Einger? Uh, Einger though is is actually one of those breweries that's on my bucket list of breweries that I want to go to. Definitely, they are. They, I mean, just the pictures of it online are just so freaking beautiful and mm -hmm. amazing. And well, I think a lot of the. I mean, I haven't had one bad beer from them. Their their yeah. their stuff is pretty much yeah, it's all very yeah, perfect. perfect. For me, like um, you know, Einger is one of the breweries I want to visit, and then Weinstefaner, obviously, yeah. which is the other like you know major major. They're the oldest you know, brewery. 
Is that right? Is I believe, yeah, like this? 1048 yeah. was when they were founded. Mm. But that was the big hype be- with uh, Vine Stefaner and um, Sam Adams. Mm-hmm. Oh, for the Infinium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was like the oldest brewery dealing with Sam Adams, which is not the oldest brewery. But which you can get Infinium Ale again now. It's out again. It has been yeah, released. Yeah, they a 2011 yeah. batch. And you can get a badge for drinking it. Unadapted. Yep. yep. I'm working on getting a bottle. Just I saying. think well, Did, you last year when it one? came out, no, it was it's really limited release this year, and they're really? staggering it because last year they released it all at once, and because it was it's such a large format, and because of the style of the beer, like it didn't sell extremely well like all at once, and so there was a lot of it that sat on the shelves. Really, and so they're this year they're um, releasing it in stages so oh. that they can kind of like. Keep the shelves fresh so that you're getting, you know, yeah, not, yeah, okay. you know what I'm I, saying? I, 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 so it's properly that. stored before it gets to the shelf. Yeah, because right, right. I remember last year it was just plentiful. Right. And I bought three bottles and it's like, sweet, this is perfect. And this year it's like, you can't find it anywhere. I get to see it, yeah. yeah even, uh, I think David was in New York yesterday and couldn't find it anywhere there. I want to point out uh, baked bread. I'm getting a, like an incredible amount of oh, breadiness yeah. from this right now. Very, um, very biscuity. <clears throat> yeah, it's like, and the thing about... Um, Double box is that they're almost all Munich malt, which is like kind of like a, a dark, wonderful, delicious malt. But you know, you, it's one of those things that you add a ton of it and it becomes this basically. Is nice. Munich classified as a base malt or like a? It can be. It's um, used as a base malt. Yeah, because I can, used it in one of my the the session beer I did, and it did lend a lot of like toasty bready. Yeah, it, it's it, it, it's a malt that has a ton of character. You can use it as a base malt, but it's one of those things where it's in that weird in between stage between hey, base malt and specialty not malt. Not MBT Shut Save up. it for them. <laughs> there is a certain um, overlap that happens. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, People fine. Want to know Do about your home brewing show on New Brew Thursday. Hey, this isn't a home brewing. This is brewing. Cue the brewing. MBT Brewing ad right here. Uh, nice. Nice. Um, um, but no. So yeah, it's 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 a malt with a lot of characters you can use either way so so now because i need to beat matt up for a few minutes i'm going to send you off to a master pairings go away bye come back please Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairing with me, your host, Bill Sysak, and I have my good friend Randy Clemens here, Bon Vivant, uh, beer guy, and an expert in all things rooster. What does that mean, Randy? Uh, Well, I wrote a cookbook, the Sriracha Cookbook, 50 Rooster Sauce Recipes That Pack a Punch. Um, Just been a fan of Sriracha for a number of years, well over a decade. And I uh, thought it'd be cool to come here for a, an episode of Master Pairings with Dr. Bill. I love sriracha. It's, it's, it's my favorite hot sauce, bar none. Put it, Mine too. Do it in my Bloody Marys, do all kinds of things. So I actually had you make something from the recipe because you want to tell them about that real yes. quick? Yes. So this is a sriracha cheese log. Um, right now, currently, we're around the holidays, so I thought it'd be kind of uh, apropos. It's uh, a mixture of cream cheese, chev, uh, rosemary, chives, parsley, little black pepper, and some fresh garlic. Uh, you put it together. Let it uh, sit in the refrigerator for a while, firm up, and then you roll it around in some more of the herbs and the pepper. Comes out really nice and goes great on some crostini. So I challenged Dr. Bill to come up with the perfect pairing for it. I've already tried it. It's amazing. I really Thank enjoy you. it. So what I thought we'd do is a nice IPA. As we know, um, one, beer's great with cheeses and fatty foods because it cuts through the, uh, cleanses your palate, cuts through the fat. But also, um, normally you would go theoretically with something malty, so... It would, because the sweetness in beer can cut through heat, and this definitely has some heat. But for those of you who are heat fans, like myself and Randy, um, if you like things hot, you want to have something bitter, something with hops. An IPA is perfect. What happens is it still soothes the front and mid palates, but then it leaves this long, accentuated burn on the end palate, which is very delightful and it's not overwhelming. So uh, Alpine uh, Nelson uh, IPA, fabulous, made with rye, so it's going to have a little more body and it's also going to, and spice, and it's going to have the Nelson Sabine hop, so it's really delicious. So let's give it a try and see how it is. All right. Let me just reach over and grab your glass. I will multitask. Perfect. So we always do a cheers right off the bat, so cheers, my friend. Cheers. Good to see you. 
Ah, beautiful nose. It's a fresh batch. I it's love a... this beer. Mm. It's got that pininess, which I think oh. is gonna go really well with the rosemary also. Okay. So let's give it a I'm chance. Ready. Cheers. So good. Oh yeah. Hit the nail on the head. Put that fire out. You get that rosemary jumping out at you. All the fresh herbs. The cheese is brilliant. It's so good. And the sriracha just is still there. So crunchy. So fun. Really good. I highly recommend you guys pick up this book. This recipe is amazing. And it took me all of what, eight minutes to throw it together, maybe? Exactly, very simple. And it goes so great with IPAs. I can see this going with great with Saisons, Belgian IPAs, um, any uh, amber ales that have a lot, nice hot bill, they'd go really well too, but this Nelson's beautiful. Yeah. I, I think the cheese log has gotten a bad name over the years. Yes. I aim to fix that with nice. the Syrah cheese log. Updated so. cheese log, I love it. Um, now, you're here at Stone with myself. I do work uh, at Stone. What's your, what's your role there? Uh, I'm the PR coordinator, um, and I actually got to meet Bill while I was working on another book. So I will move the Sriracha cookbook out of the way for a second. And uh, another book we did, and features Bill prevalently, uh, the, the Craft of Stone Brewing Company. It's another one with some great recipes from the bistro, some actual beer recipes scaled down for home brew, and uh, just another really, really nice thing to add to the collection. A uh, really nice gift to give to somebody who loves beer, definitely, or to enjoy yourself. So that and the Sriracha Cookbook, essential reading. I own three. <laughs> essential I, reading on your list. I think I have some pairings in the the, the uh, Stone Book, too. Absolutely. So it's section. really fun. It tells you the whole history of Stone, 15 fabulous years. And the Sriracha Cookbook, I, I think I'm going to challenge myself and make all 50 recipes because I'm such a Sriracha fan. How could you not? And it just seems fabulous. So... That is amazing. That's very evil, I think. I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble with that one. And uh, the beer goes beautifully, like I said. The rye really, it's just so well-rounded. I think you want something with a little more malt background than just pure hops, and it's gonna come out. But like I said, the Nelson Sabine, man, you just get this pine and rosemary and heat, and it soothes everything, and it's so delectable. Our producer's literally pacing back and forth, waiting for us to cut so he can get in here and try it before we drink all the Nelson. So with that being said, Randy, mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming. Let's thank do you. another master pairing at right after this. Actually, we'll do something else just to do it. I'm here. And uh, cheers, my friend. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, everybody. Perfect. Thank you. So that was master pairings. It Did was. Did you enjoy it? I am sure it was awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Delicious. I wasn't really feeling that one. I guess you were. We don't know. know what it you're was. Just, <laughs> you're just trying to be contrarian, that's all. I like contrarian. Oh, I learned a new word today. What's that? Propinquity. Huh? What? Propinquity. You just made that up right no, now. No, it is a noun. It, it refers to the state of being close to one another. Oh, nice. So somebody that I follow on so we are very Plurk propinquitous. and Twitter. Yeah, we're very propinquitous. Thank you. Oh, nice. nice. Uh, yeah, somebody I follow on Twitter and Plurk and, you know, whatever. She's awesome. Her name is Rogue Tess, and she Plurk. is amazing. Ah, I haven't visited yeah, Plurk in a Plurk while. Plurk like, so... You know what? The only reason I haven't been on Plurk in a while is because I can't log in. <laughs> And anyway, so save, as save I'm driving through too. Newport today, I'm looking in my rearview mirror, and I'm like, God, that woman behind me looks so familiar. Like, thinking of Pearl Jam? Was I thinking of Pearl Jam? No, you weren't. I no. was not, no. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was, and I, I kept staring at her in the mirror, and she picks up her phone and starts, like, messing around with her phone behind me. And sure enough, my phone rings, and it's her. It's Teresa. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, that's so cool. Like, I was wondering if that was you behind me. And she's nice. like... And so she sent me a text message later, like... Laughing out loud at our cosmic propinquity. And I was like, nice. I am not going to respond to that until I look that word up and find out what it is. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, she is awesome. Yeah, she is cool. Yeah. Um, she's a, she's an English teacher, so she she's has all the She's been to a couple of our uh, appearances, too. She's, yeah. yeah. Well, and she's also, like, friends with Jason Quinn. And she knits. Yeah, she knits. She's, she's a, a knitter. knitter. <laughs> yeah. I want her to knit me a beer koozie. She made koozie. a Doctor Who scarf. Yeah, too. I want her to knit me a beer koozie. So, back to the beer. Um, I have to say this, I, and I've said it many times on the show, and I'm going to say it many more times on the show, so get used to hearing it. Um, and I'm going to stop playing with those, and I apologize for playing with them for the last 20 minutes. Uh, anyway, um, we live in... Oh, my God. <laughs> so, 
See, the beating just didn't even work. Jiggle. Did you just make masturbation? No, no, I was. I was <laughs> John's just over here, like, I was rubbing rolling, one out. Like, no, no, no. I was rolling dice. <laughs> oh, okay. Roll some dice. Do it. Come on. Do it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. <laughs> See? It's really nice. All right, anyway. anyway. This is um, a fun one to edit. The, uh, the American beer culture is such that we are very much into the big and hyped and whatever beers that are like, it's 18% and it's aged in 55 different rum and whiskey barrels and blah, 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 which are great. And I love that. I love those things. But a lot of the craft beer drinkers out there have never bothered to go back and visit some of these original styles the classics, of beer. The for classics, sure. and there's just so back to what much, I said on yeah, the last show. so much to be to gain from that. The show you know? before that, these beers are easily overlooked. One thing you have to appreciate, especially about German brewers, is that this a beer like this is an example of pure technical perfection. Yeah, that's you my know point. what I mean. Right. That's yeah, my it's point. It, it's like the. German brewers especially, they know the brewing process better than anybody. You know, I mean, they're, they're, there are, you know, microbrewers who are kind of slapdash, like, you know, it's like, yeah, we'll throw in some of this and put in some of this and ferment it at 80, whatever. But, like, you know, these guys have their numbers down. They it's a have it's a tradition, every, yeah, you know? every single aspect of the brewing process yeah. is very, very specific and nailed down. And this has is a been beer you'll buy, you can buy yeah. now or 10 years later. It's going to taste exactly the same way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's such an incredible accomplishment. You exactly. Know? You, you really got to give it up to, you know, here, here, here's the Germans. You know, and this is uh, the second Iinger show. I think the first one was the one you did back yeah. in the day. Right? Back in the day, where the shows don't count the, anymore. Um, Alt Bears Dunkel. <laughs> right? Alt Bears Dunkel, and you have to say it angrily. And I was, I was a fan Alt of Bears the Dunkel. No, seriously, Steve, mm -hmm. doing just not, not to, you know, just to wrap this up. I, I watched that show mm -hmm. and I tried that beer, and it was awesome. Mm -hmm. And like I. I thank you for doing that show. Aww. Because it was awesome. That was, that's John a great and I are going to have a moment now. So yeah. the Art Bearish Dunkel from my anger. Yeah, I there love you, go. John. That was adorable. What about me? Hello. Yeah. Um, Hanging hang here. Hang noise. Alone. 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 Yeah. I think that's the noise of music. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the noise of the closing <laughs> music. <laughs> oh, Matt was saying something. <laughs> oh, Matt. Hey, Matt. <laughs> so oh, on that note, stay safe and drink beer. Wait. No, oh, Matt, come back. Come back. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. No, I'll be back. All right, we gotta we gotta cheers so, before yeah. we kick you off. Yeah, I know. All right. Yeah. On that note, stay safe and drink beer. Yeah.